Though Bucky Barnes had existed for decades, his Winter Soldier persona and backstory was created by Ed Brubaker in his seminal run on Captain America. Taking over as Captain America after Steve Rogers was killed in Civil War, Bucky wrestled with his past as a Russian agent while trying to live up to his best friend's legacy. But then Steve came back, and in Marvel's Fear Itself event, Bucky seemingly died, and Steve took up the mantle of Captain America once again. Only, Bucky didn't actually die. Because, come on, this is comic books, no one ever really dies. And if they do die, they pretty much always come back. You see, it was all a ruse devised by the original Nick Fury to make the world believe that the Winter Soldier was gone. Now, Bucky could operate in the shadows once more, being employed by S.H.I.E.L.D. to hunt down a very specific group of enemy sleeper agents, the very men that he trained. During his time as a Russian operative under the guise of Winter Soldier, Bucky trained elite soldiers under Project Zephyr. These men underwent a similar hibernation program to what Bucky himself experienced, and now they are being auctioned off to unknown forces. They are waking up. They have become a threat once more. Teaming up with Natasha Romanov, the Black Widow, Bucky chases after these hibernation chambers in an attempt to prevent the soldiers from being reactivated but he is thwarted by a fierce gorilla with the machine gun, speaking Russian, declaring death to America. <laughs> and man, did that panel catch me off guard. This story started out feeling like a fairly grounded affair, focusing more on espionage and the seedy underbelly of the Marvel Universe. Brubaker's Captain America work involved Crossbones and the Red Skull, characters who are generally less powered when they don't have the cosmic cubes and the like. Likewise, I've been reading some of Ed Brubaker's more recent image work, such as Killer Be Killed and Velvet, which is generally more grounded spy and crime fiction. So my expectation for Winter Soldier was something along those lines. Bucky dealing with his past alongside Natasha, tackling Project Zephyr and perhaps the Red Room, exploring the Marvel Universe from a different angle. And we do essentially get that, just apparently with a lot more gorillas, Doctor Doom and the outlandish bits than I was actually expecting. Now, the presence of the gorilla actually fits fairly well given the nature of the story. You see, in Marvel Comics, Ivan Kragoff is a character who has been around since the 1960s, facing off against the Fantastic Four originally. Donning the moniker The Red Ghost, Ivan trained primates who eventually obtained superpowers. And working for the Soviet Union at the time, he called his team of supervillainous primates the Super Apes. And so, armed with this knowledge, it is understandable that a story centered around Russian superpowers might feature a guerrilla super soldier of sorts. But even then, it's not necessarily expected. The tone of the book is still very serious, dark, and espionage Only with a Russian guerrilla standing man to ape against the Winter Soldier. And that's the thing. Brubaker plays it very seriously. The Russian sleeper agents, the attempted assassination of Dr. Doom, the Red Ghost and his super apes, the Doombot and its o Omega crotch. Yes, the Omega symbol like on Darkseid's chest, only centered around the Doombot's crotch. Let's all just take a moment to appreciate the Omega crotch. And overall, it, it is a pretty good read, with plenty of James Bond-esque capers and high-octane spy thriller action. This is Ed Brubaker doing what he does best, telling stories centered around espionage, crime, political intrigue, and intense action sequences one would expect to see in a James Bond or Jason Bourne film. Later entries in the series felt a little more as though they were trying to keep the book relevant and boost its sales, as they wound up bringing in other characters to make cameo or brief one or two issue appearances. These include characters like Hawkeye, Daredevil, and Wolverine. It's fitting that this comes at the end before Brubaker passed the baton to Jason Latour's short-lived run to close out the series. Now I'd say, if you're interested in exploring the Winter Soldier, this isn't really the best place to start. That would inevitably be Ed Brubaker's Captain America run. But it's an entertaining read if you're already acquainted with the character. 
And I want to stress that, I mean, if you're already familiar with the Marvel Comics version of the character. Because as he is written by Ed Brubaker, it is tonally quite a bit different from what we got in the movies, and especially what we get in Falcon and the Winter Soldier. So yeah, this book is entertaining, it is worth reading, just keep in mind that it is firmly set in the Marvel Universe, with all of the goofiness that, that entails. But even with the goofiness, Brubaker plays it straight, shying away from typical superhero affair and comic book antics in favor of the dark and gritty world of super spies. As an end cap for Brubaker's run on Captain America and the Winter Soldier, the series is a little odd, and it kind of feels like Brubaker's overstayed his welcome just a little. Like he's kind of run out of ideas. While good and worth reading, it is far from the heights of his run on Captain America, but at least it gave us a Russian super soldier gorilla and the Doombots Omega Crotch. Be sure to help me out by hitting like and subscribe. Leave a comment to let me know your thoughts. And until next time, this is Uncle Joel saying, stay tangible. <laughs>